What's up guys? Today we'll take a closer look at the anatomy and function of the cerebral cortex. The cerebral cortex consists of grey matter, represented by the neuronal cell bodies that produce nerve impulses. Basically, the cerebral cortex is divided into 52 Brodmann areas, each of which has its own histological characteristics and its own function. Of course, it is unnecessary to remember them all, and in general, it does not make much practical sense, so we will briefly go through the most essential areas. As a reminder, each of the cerebral hemispheres has this central sulcus, aka fissure of Rolando, between the frontal and parietal lobes. So anteriorly to the sulcus, we have the precentral gyrus, and the cortex covering the precentral gyrus is called the primary motor cortex. This is Brodmann area number 4. It contains the giant pyramidal neurons, actually the largest neurons in the central nervous system, also called bad cells, that are responsible for voluntary muscle contraction, voluntary movements of the opposite or contralateral side of the body. So the precentral gyrus sends a signal to the skeletal muscles, causing their contraction. And the term voluntary means that we can control this process, meaning if we want to flex the arm, we actually flex the arm, and if we want to extend the leg, we extend the leg, and so on. The key point here is that the primary motor cortex is responsible for our movements. How to remember the location? It is quite simple. The motor area is located anteriorly to the central sulcus, just like the car motor, or car engine, is located in its front part. The primary motor cortex is organized in a particular way of somatotopic arrangement. Its upper and medial parts are responsible for the movement of the lower limbs, and the lower and lateral parts, respectively, of the head and neck. This particular pattern, this concept, is called the Penfield's motor homunculus. Guys, if you need informative, structured and high-yield PDF notes for this or other videos, check out my Patreon profile. Posterior to the central sulcus, we have the postcentral gyrus. The cortex of this gyrus is called the primary somatosensory cortex, Brodmann areas number 1, 2 and 3. It receives and processes somatic sensor information from the contralateral side of the body. Its sensations like touch, pain, temperature, pressure, vibration, and of course proper reception or body position feeling. And just like the primary motor cortex, it has a particular pattern of somatotopic arrangement. Its upper and middle parts are responsible for the sensory input from the lower limbs, and the lower and lateral parts, respectively, from the head and neck. This concept is called the Penfield sensory homunculus. Anterior to the primary motor cortex, we have the motor association cortex. This is Brodmann area number 6. It consists of two regions, the premotor cortex or premotor area and supplementary motor area. Basically, these areas are responsible for not just a simple muscle contraction, not just a voluntary movement, but for the planning of the movement or motor planning and sequencing of movement, though the function gets more complicated compared to the primary motor cortex. Remember this principle of complication, we will come back to it later. Let's move a little bit interior. Area number 8 is the frontal eye field, involved in voluntary rapid or saccadic eye movements. The term saccadic means rapid, simultaneous eye movements in the direction we need. For example, when we track across the page, 
from one line to another while reading. The so-called broadcast area is located a little lower within the inferior frontal gyrus. It is predominantly, but not exclusively, responsible for speech production, for stimulating the muscles that are involved in speech production. It is important to note that Broca's area can be found particularly in the dominant hemisphere. Most people, right-handed and left-handed, have it in the left hemisphere. But this is not an absolute rule, it may be different, some people have it in the right hemisphere. The lesion of the Broca's area is called Broca's aphasia or expressive aphasia and is commonly associated with non-fluent, grammatically incorrect speech accompanied by intact comprehension. And now let's look at the Wernicke's area, located within the posterior part of the superior temporal gyrus and is predominantly, but again not exclusively, responsible for language comprehension, both written and spoken language. Like the Broca's area, it's located only in the dominant hemisphere, left or right. The lesion of the Wernicke's area is called Wernicke's aphasia or receptive or sensory aphasia. Its key feature is impaired comprehension, commonly associated with fluent but meaningless speech, called the word salad. Anteriorly to all these areas, we have the prefrontal cortex. It is responsible for such complex higher functions as cognition, learning, working memory, decision making, various aspects of personality, social behavior, and so on. Also, it is partially involved in motor planning. In evolutionary terms, this is the newest and the most complex cortical area. Remember, we said that there is a primary motor cortex that performs a relatively simple function and next to it we can find a motor association cortex that performs a more complex function. This is also true for sensory modalities. For example, posterior to the primary somatosensory cortex, meaning posterior to the postcentral gyrus, we can find the somatosensory association cortex and posterior association cortex or area that not only receive sensory input but also perform integration or advanced processing or analysis of it. For example, identify the position of an object, its various characteristics, color, shape, size, all this stuff. In short, these areas collect diverse sensory input together and create a more comprehensive picture of the world around us. It is the same with auditory, visual and any other sensory modalities. There are primary cortical areas, auditory, visual and other, and next to them we can find association areas that provide analysis and recognition of stimuli. Let's talk about the insula lobe, or just the insula. It is located in deeper regions of the brain, like deep inside the lateral sulcus, and is covered by the so-called operculum. So, the insula is involved in gestation, it contains a gustatory or taste cortex, in vestibular sensation, it has connections with semicircular canals, and in visceral sensation, so it receives sensory input from your internal organs. Well, now let's briefly look at the medial surface of the cerebral hemispheres. And here, the key structure, the most significant structure, is the cingulate gyrus and the cingulate cortex that covers it. It is a component of the so called limbic system that plays an important role in memory emotional responses, motivation, and performs many other functions. 
For more information about the limbic system, check out the corresponding video. On the medial surface of the brain, we can also find the olfactory cortex, primary and association, that provides processing, analysis and recognition of the olfactory or smell sensor input. Well, and next time we'll take a look at the anatomy and function of the basal ganglia, which, like the cerebral cortex, consists of gray matter. Thanks for watching. I hope this video was helpful. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and if you need PDF notes for this or other videos, check out my Patreon profile. See you next time.